This episode of One on One with Dr. Bajaj is about dietary restriction. Now, this is different than caloric restriction, and dietary restriction refers to eliminating or minimizing a certain type of nutritional food to pursue a goal towards your optimization journey. But before we understand that, we need to understand what types of macronutrients there are. We're going to talk about that in this episode of One on One with Dr. Bajaj. Unlocking the secrets of longevity, wellness, and peak performance. Dive deep into the world of cutting edge health, explore groundbreaking medical advances, and uncover the keys to living your best life at any age. This is One on One with Dr. Bajaj, where science meets life and vitality knows no limits. talk about macronutrients and how our body works these are basically the different types of fuel that we can take into our body to create certain types of effects now a nice way to look at this and how i like to think about this is really breaking this up into three categories and then from those three we can break it up into basically two those three categories of macronutrients include carbohydrates fats and protein now, carbohydrates and fats are primarily used as energy sources. However, protein is different. Protein is used primarily as a structural building block and a structural ingredient to build your body, to build structure. Amino acids can build things like muscle, can build things like proteins, can build things like peptides, certain molecules, all sorts of different things in your body. And this is a key differentiator between carbohydrates plus fats, which are primarily energy, and protein, which is primarily structural. But first, let's go ahead and talk about carbohydrates. However, before we get into this, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to my channel. This channel is all about bringing you value for free with practical tips that you can use right away to help you on your optimization journey. So let's get into it. So what do you think is your body's main fuel? Well, you may be surprised to hear it's actually carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are used as your body's main fuel. They are a source of quick energy, especially in the form of simple carbohydrates like sugar. However, the problem with these simple carbohydrates is they can spike your blood sugar. And you can be running a roller coaster all day, which also increases hunger and makes you hungry throughout the day. What if you need longer lasting energy? Well, then one should consider something like a complex carbohydrate. And this typically is things like whole grain, for example. So to really maximize your use of carbohydrates, I wouldn't necessarily say getting rid of the carbohydrates is the answer because the type of fuel that carbohydrates can provide is very important, very helpful, and very significant. What you want to do is avoid the spikes in your blood sugar. The best way to do that is really focus on complex carbohydrates. Brown rice, vegetables, and oats are great examples of these types of complex carbohydrates. And stay away from simple carbohydrates like sugar. In general, the white types of carbohydrates can be a little less helpful for you. That includes sugar, white bread, white pastas, things of that nature. When we talk about another source of energy besides carbohydrates, that can be fats. Fat can actually act as storage for future energy when needed. This is why something like fasting works, or if you're not able to eat throughout the day, you begin to break down fat, freeing up glucose and glycogen to obtain energy to continue to function. But fats are also incredibly important for overall function of you as a human being. They are some of the biggest precursors to creating hormones, like cholesterol, for example, is considered to be a type of fat, and most hormones actually come from cholesterol. In addition to that, your brain loves fat as a fuel. It's probably the best fuel you can give your brain. That's why certain good fats like guacamole and avocados are fantastic for your brain. Also responsible th for things like creating cell membranes. Not all fats are created equal. There are typically three types of fats. That includes saturated fats, monounsaturated fats, and polyunsaturated fats. So you got saturated, monounsaturated, MUFA, and then polyunsaturated, PUFA. A good example of saturated fats are things like meat 
and butter. Monounsaturated fats include things like avocados and olive oil. And then fish and nuts are a great source of polyunsaturated fat. Realistically, guys, you can't really get one type of fat exclusively. These types of fats are all found together in most foods. But foods with good fats include things like avocados, nuts, fatty fish, things of that nature. The worst possible type of thing that you can eat from a fat standpoint is fried foods. These are trans fats, which are incredibly dangerous, really provide no nutritional value whatsoever, and have a direct negative effect on your cardiovascular function. Now, let's talk about probably the king of macronutrients for so many reasons, and that is protein. Now, protein is basically the structural building blocks of your entire body. Proteins and amino acids help build structures like your muscle, supports immune function, which is obviously very important. And check this out. Protein actually helps keep you full and feeling full. Meat, fish, and dairy, and certain vegetables as well, like legumes and broccoli, are great, great sources of protein. So if you look at recommended daily allowances of protein, you'll see anything from 0.8 to 1 gram per kilogram of body weight. This number is frankly very low. Most of the recent research actually demonstrates that this number is barely enough to maintain the amount of muscle tissue that you already have. If you're in any sort of anabolic state, meaning you're trying to build muscle, and this is frankly all of us, and I'll tell you why in a minute, then you want to shoot for a significantly higher number. You don't want to shoot for one gram per kilogram. You want to aim more for one gram per pound. And a pound is 2.2 kilograms. So basically, you're looking at 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram, which is almost double, actually more than double of the recommended daily allowance. Now, what if you take in too much protein? Can you take in too much protein? It's very difficult to take in too much protein. You need to take in about 3.5 grams per kilogram of protein to even begin to tip the scale on too much. And if you do take excess protein in that you don't need, you end up just peeing it out. You, you release it and excrete it through your urine as urea, and it gets broken down. So if your goal is to maintain where you're at, then the RDA, the recommended daily allowance of 0.8 to 1 gram per kilogram, might be enough. But don't forget, as we get older, it becomes more and more difficult to maintain muscle mass. Just naturally, the changes that we see in our body, you begin to experience more muscle wasting. So for example, if you have a patient population where they don't do any sort of weight-bearing activities, they don't take in high levels of protein, you will see over time, even at that point, let 0.8 to 1 gram per kilogram recommendation, they will actually begin to lose muscle. However, if you take another study group and you actually load them with protein anywhere from one gram per pound and higher, and you expose them to weight-bearing activity, you will see some of those people will gain weight for sure, but a lot of those people will actually just maintain where they're at. So if you want to maintain where you're at, you need to think about you're fighting the natural kind of process of your body towards entropy and muscle wasting and muscle loss. So maintaining where you're at will actually require higher levels of protein just naturally as you age. So from a longevity standpoint, ideally focus on one gram per pound of protein per day. That's going to help you maintain muscle growth in addition to weight-bearing activity. So when it comes to dietary restriction, really we can restrict one or more than one of these categories discussed. What are the benefits and negatives of this type of kind of diet nutrition intake versus caloric restriction, which we talked about, and then time restricted eating, which we will talk about soon. Well, the biggest pros of, of dietary restriction include there is evidence out there that kind of eliminating or minimizing certain macronutrient types or certain things like bad fats, such as trans fats or simple carbohydrates can actually reduce heart disease, reduce risk of diabetes and reduce cardiovascular disease as well as promote longevity simultaneously. In addition, if your body is not working hard to kind of break down these nasty types of kind of macronutrients, these nasty types of fats, or these kind of nasty types of simple carbohydrates, then that energy can be used for other more productive things, like clearing out your body of any kind of disease cells, dead cells, zombie cells, getting rid of that stuff and doing more general housekeeping, which ultimately leads to less inflammation. And of course, there are some significant negative effects as well. It's very difficult to maintain 
dietary restriction for a prolonged period of time. Think about this. How long can you really go truly low carb indefinitely? Not really, right? At some point, we all tend to kind of break that. How long can you really go without eating any fat at all? It's very difficult to do and practically very, very challenging and arguably not necessarily the best way to go about it. And certainly I wouldn't recommend going with a low protein or no protein type of dietary restriction diet. Those do exist. There's some discussion that that may help with like longevity. I haven't seen it. And I think most studies will actually point to that as not being the case. And the more protein you can take and focus on, the better. So what are the rituals and routines that you can apply? Understanding dietary restriction is really looking at protein, carbohydrates, and fat, breaking those down the way we have today with the different types of fat, the different types of carbohydrates and protein, understanding proteins are the building block of your body. So really no harm in taking a lot of protein in, but fat and carbohydrates are really only intended to be energy sources. So if you're taking in too much of that and you don't need that energy, that energy then gets converted to storage, aka fat. Understand that great divide between protein as, as building blocks and more structural and then fat and carbohydrates as energy sources, right? When you break that up, you may get more of an understanding on why we can gain bad weight when we eat too much of the energy sources and we're not using those, and why it's very difficult <clears throat> to gain bad weight when we're eating structural elements like protein. That tends to be good weight that we end up putting on because you end up promoting muscle gain, especially combined with a proper weight-bearing activity or a weight-bearing exercise plan. But the key really here, and I think the biggest takeaway to this episode is this. Be mindful of what you eat. Understand it's very difficult from a dietary restriction standpoint to break down and eliminate one category completely, especially with fats. Fats are really all kind of related. You get a little bit of poly, a little bit of mono, a little bit of fully saturated fats, and almost everything. You want to kind of tilt the ratios as much as we can to the good types of fat, the types that we've discussed here. Fatty fish, nuts, seeds, avocados, things of that nature. And there are things you can completely avoid that are completely in your control, like fried foods. Zero net gain with that outside of maybe some short-term pleasure and long-term loss. So really be mindful of that. Just cut out the fried foods, guys, because not only are you not gaining any nutritional value, but now your body has to break that down. You're going to get more inflamed. That energy and those resources are going to be used for different types of activities when they should be used for kind of general body cleanup and body housekeeping. So if your goal, like all of our goals should be, is to maintain or put on muscle as you get older, increase your longevity, maximize your health span, not just your lifespan, and just overall decrease your inflammation and improve your longevity, aka your quality of life. If you want to improve the moments in your life, not just the moments given, think about how you eat. Don't take in more fuel than you intend to burn, meaning chill on the carbohydrates and the fat if you're not going to have an active day or you're not going to burn it off right away. If you're starting to lose weight or you're feeling like you're getting weak, maybe unstable, you need to build more muscle. Take in more structural elements so you can build that muscle, right? And also globally understand as we get older, muscle wasting is a natural progression and you have to be, in my opinion, active and aggressive about fighting it by increasing your protein intake to one gram per pound, not one gram per kilogram, almost more than double what the recommendation is. And don't forget with protein, if you take in too much, you break it down and excrete it as urea. With fat and carbohydrates, if you take in too much, you store it as future energy, as subcutaneous fat. Big difference there, guys. So focus on protein. It also makes you feel more full. Focus less on the fats and the carbohydrates, but don't eliminate. And definitely make a mindful decision to eliminate the obviously bad stuff like fried foods. Anyway, guys, I hope this episode was helpful for you. And as always, the best time to start something was yesterday. The second best time is today. Don't look back tomorrow with regret. Take one small step today to get yourself maximally optimized. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of One on One with Dr. Bajaj. If you find any value in these episodes, any value in the show, 
Please like and subscribe and share these episodes, specifically the ones you feel may help some of your friends and family.